On today's episode of Mad Hat Cloud Security Bingo, we're exploring Azure's web application firewall and SQL injection defense. This project focuses on application layer security, which is layer seven. You gotta know your layers, folks. We're gonna deploy a vulnerable web app, OWASP Juice Shop, and protect it with an Azure application gateway. Because the only way to learn in life is to f around and find out. And because why expect application developers to code basic security into their apps when you can just slap a WAF in front of it instead? Now, if you haven't seen my previous cloud security project videos, where we knock out Azure Functions, Microsoft Sentinel, Virtual Machines, MISP Threat Intelligence Data Connectors, make sure to catch up so you can participate in this imaginary game we call trying to get a job. Now, why do we care about WAFs? Why bother? Because WAFs make the world go round, literally. Cloudflare just had an outage and the internet broke. Cloudflare, by the way, functions as a web application firewall. So it's about damn time y'all learned how it works by f***ing around and finding out. Let's get started. As a reminder, you'll need an Azure subscription and they do offer $200 worth in credits in their free trial. Select Azure for free. You'll be greeted with this blinding page. So you'll wanna go into settings, go to appearance, hit dark, hit apply. Your eyes will thank me later. Search for container instances up at the top, hit create. Create a new resource group if you need to. I already created one, name it Juice Shop. Unfortunately, you can't use caps. Microsoft is weird that way. Select other registry, where we're going to take advantage of the ease that is Docker. This is to pull an image from a repository. Uh, now this can be done with quick start images and Azure Container Registry, which in hindsight is a feature you should probably explore since we're digging into Azure Cloud Security Services as it is. But it offers the same functionality as Docker Hub. And I'm lazy and I don't wanna move the OWASP juice shop image from Docker Hub into Azure's Container Registry. It's doing the same thing. We're going to use other registry. Now due to the rate limits on image pulls from Docker Hub, put in because someone had to ruin a good thing being obnoxious, unlimited anonymous image pulls from Docker Hub ended June 10th, 2024. So if you're running into this stupid, please try again later, you may need to change your region or you can try an authenticated pull proving you're not a robot. Before we could just point to the image by putting the path in, specify the version if we care about that, otherwise it defaults to latest. And with just the path and setting the image type to public, because it's a public image, we could deploy Jushop without any issues. Due to the rate limiting, I'd have to guess that certain regions are pulling images anonymously and Docker is rate limiting all those Microsoft IPs. So switching regions, you might get lucky or try the authenticated method. Go to Docker Hub, hit sign up and sign up. Create an account. Now with your new account, select private. The image registry logon server for Docker is, for Docker Hub is index.docker.io. All right, you wanna leave it as Linux because we're pulling a Linux image. Under networking, switch port 80 to port 3000 because security through obscurity. And boom, you're a web application developer. Kidding, but it's pretty neat how you can quickly deploy an app in a container. Let's check out our new container. Select go to resource. This container we set to public and is accessible via the remote IP here that is assigned to the container via port 3000. So if we copy over that IP, so if we open up a new browser, we put in the remote IP port 3000, we're in business, the juice shop. Now this image is riddled with vulnerabilities. SQL injection is one of them. So if we go to the login page under account, we do a very simple SQL injection, apostrophe or one equals one hyphen hyphen. And for the password, uh, if you put in anything for the password and hit login, congrats, you're an elite hacker now. This is SQL injection 101. No input sanitization means in the put go boom. But first, a word from our sponsor, Floppy Data. Cloud security is not only just identity access management, policies, and scanners. A lot of pain comes from the network edge. Unstable egress IPs, captures during vendor logins, region-specific behavior that you've never tested, and rate limits that break your automations. To keep that boring part predictable, I add Floppy Data to my toolkit. It's a proxy backbone that gives you a clean, controllable egress for real projects. Here's how it helps security work. Stable admin access. Use a static sticky residential IP when you're on a hotel, coffee shop, Wi-Fi. So cloud consoles, CI, CD, SIM, and ticketing portals stop 
throwing unusual activity or killing sessions. Pick from 195 plus locations at the city level to verify geo-blocking, CDN behavior, data residency, and CASB slash SASE rules like a real user from that region. Save for research and automation. Switch to rotating residential and mobile proxies for OSINT, public docs, vendor advisories, and package registries with fewer captures and throttles. Speed when you need it. Use data center proxies to pull large images, agent installers, and artifact caches fast. Team ready. Works great with Go Login, so different project profiles don't share cookies and fingerprints. But why? Floppy data versus the others. Millions of IPs worldwide, consisting of rotating and static modes, and a mix between residential, mobile, and data centers. Data centers as low as 60 cents a gig, with residential and mobile at a dollar a gig, unusually low for this scale. So if you want your cloud projects to be smoother, predictable egress, realistic geotests, fewer login headaches, add floppy data to your stack. Links are in the description and pinned comment. Step two, deploy the WAF. We're gonna protect our new Swiss cheese web app from script kitties. So first we gotta create a virtual network. Hit create, uh, select juice shop, the resource group that we created. Name your virtual network, JuiceNet. Uh, for IP addresses, uh, <laughs> reduce the subnet to slash 24 because we don't need 65,000 addresses. That's a little overkill. Validation passed. And once it's created, you'll have your virtual network. Now we have to create the application gateway. Search that and then hit create application gateway, not the container one which is counterintuitive because it literally has container in the name, <laughs> but we're not using Kubernetes. That's a different video. We're selecting the all-purpose application gateway. Select WAF v2 for the tier uh, for extra functionality, and then create a new WAF policy. I called the other one juicy policy. You can add bot protection if you want. That's just an extra protection. It's an option. But yeah, we just want the defaults. You can configure this later if you want. You'll notice here that it states what it protects. Malicious attacks such as SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and other OWASP top 10 threats. Sounds perfect for the shit we're cooking up. Select the virtual network that you just made. Under front end, you'll want to create a public IP. Name it whatever. Once you create it, you can move on to backends. You'll want to add a backend pool. So this only includes the IP address of your juice shop's container application. So you put in the public IP of your container, hit add. Next, under configuration, you have to create a routing rule to route the front end IP to the back end IP. Again, your back end is your web app. So hit add a routing rule. Name this, so many names. Priority, uh, you'll wanna set to one or two or three, it doesn't really matter. We only have one. Uh, for the listener name, name it. Uh, we can leave this port 80, um, then go to backend settings. You have to add a new backend pool. Uh, this has to be the port that your web app works on. Because we switched it to port 3000, we have to specify when you route to our web app container, route it to that IP on port 3000. Once you go through all that, um, hit review, uh, select create, and that'll run for about 15 minutes. Faster if you're lucky. But now we have a web application firewall laughing in between the world and our container. So if we put in the front end IP, it'll take us to the juice shop. We don't have to specify port 3000 because it routes that on its own, just the default 80. Yeah, it'll act like a reverse proxy, inspecting all incoming traffic and routing it to your web application. Beautiful. Now, if we try the SQL injection, apostrophe or one equals one hyphen hyphen, and we put in the password. Oh, kidding. Our WAF defaults to detection mode. So if you go into your web application firewall, go to the associated web application firewall policy, you'll see up at the top here is a switch to prevention mode button. Detection mode means that it will detect and potentially log, but it won't prevent shit. Now I'm not saying I've seen businesses make this mistake and not realize that their security tool was in detection mode instead of protect and their entire business was ransomware. But I am saying that yes, that did happen. A sadly simple fix. We go back to our web app, go into account, log out, and try logging back in using that same SQL injection. Login. Boom! Neat. We're greeted with a 403 forbidden error, a code by our application gateway. Now we wouldn't be very good cloud security engineers if we weren't logging these SQL injection attempts, would we? So if we go back to our application gateway, uh, under monitoring and diagnostic settings, create add a diagnostic setting, select all the logs and select send to log analytics workspace. This will have the default workspace that you that was generated when you started all this and obviously name it. And once you save that, it'll look like this. I called this WAF logs and under 
logs, we can use KQL queries to search for any SQL injection attempts. So these are all of our wonderfully beautiful logs. Dear God, it's beautiful. SQL injection attack. This project can be expanded on. And my challenge for everybody watching would be to secure the web application container by deploying it inside a private virtual network. Because if you've been paying attention, the Juicebox app still has a public IP. So bots and web scrapers can still find it and find it they will. It's a simple fix, redeploying the container in a private virtual network, a couple modifications here and there. I also challenge you to try and bypass the WAC. This application after all is riddled with vulnerabilities. Find a way to exploit them despite the WAF. We've gone through the setup for Azure's application gateway and firewall, but learning how a WAF works is crucial for not only cloud security professionals, but really any role in cybersecurity. It's one of many tools that organizations implement in their tech stack. It's a must have tool as well. I was a lot more hands-on at my last Fortune 500 company with the WAF that they had in place because it was a retail company that made nearly all of its revenue through online sales. Their website had to have robust rules in place to prevent the common web app attacks, focusing of course on the top 10 most critical risks known as the OWASP top 10. Things like credential stuffing, denial of service attacks, all the common attacks carried out by the constantly growing army of bots that we have shooting their shot to try and break into everything. There are tons of jobs whose primary function is, is to work on just WAFs. Cloudflare, Akamai, and massive companies that rely on these tools are constantly hiring for these highly specialized roles. Projects like these, where you familiarize yourself with what rules you need to put in place and how to configure application gateways from start to finish can help give you the experience needed to land that sweet gig. And on the next episode of Mad Hat Cloud Security Bingo, we're exploring AWS Guard Duty, the gold standard for cloud threat detection. So stay tuned for that one, folks. Oh.